said to his disciples, If I go away, I will send the Comforter unto you. It is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter cannot come unto you. How important is the ministry of the Holy Spirit to you? It has been said that many churches operate perfectly well without any reference to God or the Holy Spirit. After all, what else do we need? When we have human fellowship, human resources, human organizational ability, and human talent. I wonder, have we forgotten the purpose of the church? Have we, have we come to the time when the measure of success is not the number of people saved and meeting God, but the size of the crowd at last year's foul supper? The Bible picture of the church is of new creatures knowing God, doing the work of God, spreading his gospel, and having God confirm his word with signs and wonders and gifts of the Holy Ghost. There is a vast difference between a New Testament church and a country club or a horticultural society. One operates well with no reference to God or mention of his name. The other exists only to worship the true and living God and to wait for his son from heaven. The church is not a club. The church is not a fellowship or a debating society. The church is not a political party or a school or a concert hall. Oh, it may take on some of these roles at times when necessary, but the Bible tells us what the church is. It's the body of Christ, and it's the pillar and ground of the truth. Prayer is answered. Miracles occur. Holy Ghost conviction causes sinners to pray. People learn what it is to walk with God, and the public at large takes knowledge of us that we have been with Jesus. What I'm trying to say today is that the Holy Spirit is the absolutely essential element in Christianity. That is why Jesus said, I will send the Comforter unto you, and he will abide with you forever. He will not speak of himself. He will take of the things of Christ and reveal them to you. He will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment to come. He will take the things of Christ and reveal them to you. Question, what is happening in your church that cannot be explained except by reference to the life-giving and miraculous power of the Holy Spirit? Surely you have heard the story of the uh, schoolmaster in Britain who was teaching his boys the Apostles' Creed. Each lad was to memorize and repeat a phrase or sentence in class on the appointed day. I believe in God, one boy said. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, said another. And then there was an embarrassing silence until a small voice from the back of the room said, the boy who believes in the Holy Ghost is not here today. Do you believe in the Holy Ghost? If the church is to be as terrible as an army with banners, we must believe in the Holy Spirit and experience his power. Has your pastor been called of God or has he just been trained in a seminary? Do you pray in the Holy Ghost? Or is that strange language to you? Oh, please don't misunderstand me. I make no pitch for mindless emotionalism. I despise the excesses of name it and claim it religion. I part company totally with those who trade in holy water. But there is a vast difference between the fire that fell from heaven in Elijah's time on the altar at Mount Carmel and the ritual that passes for churchianity in so many churches today. An old hymn, rarely sung today, says this, All is vain unless the Spirit of the Holy One come down. Brethren, pray, and holy manna shall be scattered all around. 
Let me make a confession, if I may. I am hungry for the prayer meetings of my childhood and the testimony meetings of my youth and the tears that stained the mourner's bench at the altar of old-fashioned churches. Mark Smith was an alcoholic. His wife met him at the factory gate on paydays to keep him from blowing his entire paycheck in the liquor lounge. That same Mark Smith was my Sunday school superintendent for years and a shining example of what a Christian should be. When he met Christ and was born again, everything changed. Oh, my friend, theories are a dime a dozen. Self-help programs are everywhere around us, but the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes it. I read in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 that the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. That means that we need more than facts for our heads. We need the Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead to quicken our mortal bodies and to give us assurance that, that we have passed from death unto life and are indeed the children of God. Let me list for you what the Bible says the Holy Spirit does in the life of a Christian. First of all, he convicts the world of sin and righteousness and of judgment. He draws to the Father, Jesus said, no man can come except the Spirit draws him. He grants repentance unto salvation. He gives assurance, he witnesses to our spirits that we have passed from death unto life, Romans chapter 8. He takes to the things of Christ and makes them real to us. He helps our infirmities when we pray. He leads us into all truth. He quickens our mortal bodies. He empowers believers to be witnesses. When the Spirit has come, Acts 1 verse 8, He gives power for you to be a witness to Him. He leads us into all truth. He quickens our mortal body. He fills the holy, the hungry heart with good things. He manifests himself in the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He produces in us the fruit of the Spirit listed in Galatians chapter 5. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith, temperance. He is the comforter and he gives you peace in the midst of the storm. And he is the restrainer who holds back the progress of evil until that day when Christ returns to receive his church unto himself. And as the spirit of adoption, the Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus and causes you to long for his glorious appearing. Before I conclude today, let me ask you to think for a moment about the apostolic uh, statement that we have the faith of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. If you are saved at all, if you're a Bible Christian at all, you know something about the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ accepting you, forgiving you, giving you eternal life. You also know something about the love of God that surrounds you every moment of every hour of every day. But what about the communion of the Holy Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit real to you? Are you depending upon Him to quicken you, to anoint you, to bless you, to empower you, to give you fruit for your labors? The Holy Spirit is so often the forgotten member of the Holy Trinity. He's the one you need to invite into your life to be to you all that Christ intended him to be. Yes.